Math 1332, Chapter 10, Probability and Counting Techniques, Section 10, Section 2, excuse me, The Fundamental Counting Principle, Permutations, Video 6, The Permutation Formula for Indistinguishable Objects. What I mean that by that is when we're counting permutations, we're counting the number of ways that we can arrange some objects, but some of those objects might be exactly the same. For example, well, let's just take a look. In the previous video, we developed the following formula. The number of permutations you can make by selecting R out of N distinct objects is NPR equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. It's a ratio of factorials. The most common mistake people make is forgetting the denominator is not the second number. In other words, the denominator is not this number but rather the difference of these two numbers. But if you have the formula written down, you shouldn't make that mistake. For example, if you want to know that how many permutations you can make by selecting four out of seven distinct objects, whatever the scenario is, scenario is then the answer is 7P4 equals seven factorial over seven minus four factorial and I'll be honest, you can think seven minus four and just write three. In other words, you could skip the middle fraction and just write seven factorial over three factorial. Let's think about that, what that would look like if we expanded them out. The top would go seven down to one, the bottom would go three, two, one. And so the only thing that would cancel would be three, two, one. That would leave seven times six times five times four. And what does that equal? Well, seven times six is 42. Five times four is 20. 40 times two, 42 times two is 84. So 42 times 20 is 840. Oh, one quick comment that I forgot to mention in the previous video. If your calculator has a factorial button on it, then it might have an NPR button on it. If you wanna use it, you're welcome to, but don't go buy a calculator just because it has NPR on it. Um, if you're not sure if your calculator has an NPR, contact me and I'll be more than happy to uh, have a Zoom session with you to help you out. But I wanna emphasize that this is the formula when you have distinct objects, meaning that all of your objects are different. However, sometimes the objects are not all distinct. In a previous video, I'm going to highlight what I'm reading here. In a previous video, we mentioned that the number of ways to arrange eight distinct books on a bookshelf is eight factorial, which equals 40,320. In general, a factorial answers the question, how many ways can I arrange these different objects if I arrange all of them? As a follow-up question, I asked how many ways we could arrange eight books if two were the same, th three more were the same, and the remaining three were all different. In this case, not all the objects are distinct. Uh, and I kind of hinted that we would be solving this problem in the future. And it's kind of ironic that we're about to solve it in the future, but we've actually also solved it in the past. You just didn't know that yet. For example, let's say that two of the books are Wuthering Heights, one of my favorite books to read in high school, sarcasm. Three are Tom Sawyer, and the other three are Les Mis, Huckleberry Finn, and Animal Farm. I believe I've read most of those books. Not from beginning to end, but most of them. Um, so we got two copies of Wuthering Heights, three copies of Tom Sawyer, one copy of Les Mis, uh, Les Miserables, excuse me. Uh, one copy of Huckleberry Finn and one copy of Animal Farm farm. Uh, in other words, here are the objects we are arranging on a shelf. Two WHs, three TSs, an LM, an HF, and an AF. Now, we can't just say eight factorial because, for example, look at the, look at the permutation that is currently here on the screen. I'm trying to resize this. Hold on. Look at the permutation that we currently have on the screen. To create another permutation, you could think about switching some objects. For example, let's say we switch these two then the order would be different, so that would be a different permutation. But what if we switch these two? Would it be a different permutation? Well, if the books are indistinguishable, then it would be no. So we can't just say eight factorial and expect to get the correct answer because some permutations 
are indistinguishable from each other because some of the objects are indistinguishable from each other. So how do we figure out the number of permutations when two or more of the objects can't be to told apart from each other? Well, let's categorize what we have. Of these eight distinct, of these eight objects, two are indistinguishable from each other, the two weathering heights. Three are indistinguishable from each other. My apologies, I think I paused mid mid-sentence as I was prepping to make some, uh, correct some typos, so we'll start this again. Of these eight objects, two are indistinguishable from each other, the two weathering heights. Three are indistinguishable from each other, the three Tom Sawyers. One is indistinguishable from itself, the one Les Mis. One is indistinguishable from itself, the one Huckleberry Finn. And one is indistinguishable from itself, the one Animal Farm. And I'll admit it's silly to say one book is indistinguishable from itself, but to build this formula, we need to account for all objects being considered whether or not they are repeated. Because of repetitions, the number of permutations of these objects, some of which are indistinguishable from each other, is not just eight factorial, but it's real easy to adapt the formula to accommodate for objects that are repeated in our collection. It does start with eight factorial, but that number would be too high as I demonstrated back here. If we switched, uh, considering the permutation highlighted below, if we switch these two objects, it would not give us a new permutation. If the objects were different, like instead of weathering heights, if this were uh, the old man in the sea, and then we switched them, then yes, it would be a different permutation. But because the objects are the same, it would not create a different permutation, and eight factorial would count it as a different one. So eight factorial is too big. To account for repeated objects, you take the factorial and you divide it by some more factorials. The factorials that you divide it by are the factorials for the counts for each type of object. For example, there were two weathering heights, so we divide this by two factorial. There were three Tom Sawyers, so we divide this by three factorial. There was one Les Mis, so we divide this by one factorial. There was one Huckleberry Finn, so we divide this by one factorial. And there was one animal farm, so we divide that by one factorial. And I'll admit, dividing by one factorial doesn't do anything because it just divides by one. Now, if you're thinking we've seen this before, yes, go back to video four, evaluating factorial expressions. And it's one of the expressions we had evaluated on the last, last slide. I will go ahead and evaluate it really quickly. Uh, eight factorial goes eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Should have paused and wrote it, but I'm already this far. And if we expand all the factorials in the denominator, two factorial is two times one, three factorial is three times two times one. And all of the one factorials are just ones and frankly don't really matter. And then we start canceling things if we can. The biggest chunk we can cancel in mass is the three, two, one. And then we also have this two down here, which we can divide into any number on the top. We'll divide it into this four, or rather any even number on top. Two goes into four two times. Notice that the only numbers missing, excuse me, the only numbers remaining in the denominator are ones. So at this point, we're dividing by one, so we're done with the denominator. And in the numerator, we're left with eight times seven times six times five times two. I'm not gonna waste your time trying to do that in my head although I know I could, 3,360. And so there are 3,360 ways to arrange these eight books if two of them match the Wuthering Heights, three of them match the Tom Sawyers, and the others are all different. Let's make a formula out of this. This is gonna look a little funny, but it's actually pretty straightforward. In general, here's the formula for the number of permutations of n objects not all of which are necessarily distinct. In other words, some objects are repeated. Suppose you have n objects. Furthermore, suppose that K1 objects are the same. And when I say K1, I really mean K subscripted with the one. K2 objects are the same, K3 objects are the same, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In the example that we did previously, this is K1, this is K2, this is K3, so there's five Ks here. Uh, one thing that I did not, um, one second folks, there we go. 
One thing that I did not mention in the setup, which I'm going to insert now, because we are accounting for all objects, we must have K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus however many things we're counting equals, I knew that would happen, N. I would normally pause to do some reformatting here, but there we go. All right, so because we're accounting for all objects, we must have the sum of the counts of all the objects to be the total. So for example, back over here, two plus three plus one plus one plus one is eight, meaning that we are counting for all objects, whether or not they're repeated throughout our collection. All right, um, so we have n objects, we have K1 of the first object, K2 of the second object, K3 of the third object, all the way down to however many. The sum of all the Ks is equal to the total. Then the number of permutations of the n objects is n factorial, that's not a drawing, n factorial over k1 factorial, k2 factorial, k3 factorial, dot, dot, dot. So in other words, if an object is repeated, you just divide by that counts factorial. It's really pretty straightforward once you, once you do a couple. So let's do one more. Example, how many ways can you arrange the letters in Mississippi? Well, we're assuming a different order means a different arrangement. For example, if we switch these last two letters and spell it M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-I-P, -S 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 Mississippi, Mississippi, yeah, that's how you pronounce that. That's considered a different arrangement, a different permutation, if you will. But we can't just count the number of letters and say that factorial because we have a ludicrous number of repetitions in the word Mississippi. First, we need to figure out how many letters there are. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 there are 11 letters in Mississippi. But again, we can't just say 11 factorial because not all the letters are distinct from each other. Now we just have to count how many of each letter we have. There are only four distinct letters in Mississippi, M, I, S, and P. And each one of those has a count. The first letter, we'll call its count K1, there's only one M in Mississippi. The second letter, we'll call its count K2, is I. There are four I's in Mississippi. The third letter, S, we'll let K3 be its count. There are also four S's in Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S -I -S -S -I. Uh, speaking of P's, we'll let K4 be the number of P's in Mississippi, and there are only two. Notice that these do add up to 11 which is what this is saying. This is saying all of the counts of the distinct objects have to add up to the total number of objects. And so now that we know how many letters there are in Mississippi and how many there are of each letter, all we have to do to evaluate this is take the total factorial over the product of the individual counts factorials. So one factorial, four factorial, four factorial, two factorial. And if you recognize this problem, it's also the last slide of video four about evaluating factorial expressions. I'm not gonna write this one out. I am gonna switch to my calculator and share it with you so that you can see what I would press. Uh, this is the scientific calculator that is on uh, my Microsoft laptop. So if you use a Microsoft computer, you might have this also. All right, let's share this calculator. Okay, so you should be able to see my calculator now. Um, we need 11 factorial divided by 1 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, and 2 factorial. Actually, let me go back to the screen just for a second because it's a good idea to remind you of something that I haven't said in a while. If you're going to use a calculator to put a fraction expression and uh, either side of the fraction is more than a single number, you should put parentheses around it. I'm going to put parentheses around this denominator because it's clearly more than a single number. You could argue that we need parentheses around the top. Technically, we don't, but let's just say that you weren't sure and decided to put parentheses around it anyway. It's never wrong to put extra parentheses around the side of a fraction. It may be wrong to leave them off. So when in doubt, write them. We're going to put this in that calculator. Let's go back to it now. I do have a factorial button right here. So I would go open parentheses, 11 factorial, 
close parentheses. And notice on the bottom, it's giving me the current value, but on the top, it's keeping track of what I'm typing. Divided by, open parentheses, one factorial times four factorial times four factorial times two factorial close parentheses, and remember where all those came from. The one was the fact that there was one M in Mississippi, the four was for the four I's, the four was for the four S's, and the two was for the two P's. Now it's already evaluated, but I'm still gonna press equal to complete the calculation. I take that back, it hadn't evaluated it yet. Uh, by what it evaluated was the contents of the second parentheses. By pressing equals, it completes the calculations, and I get 34,650, which should have been the answer at the end of video four. So that's how you count the number of permutations of objects when some of the objects are indistinguishable from each other. In other words, some of them are repeated.